Governments across the world are trying to cut carbon emissions, and renewable energy sources such as wind turbines are thought to be a key part of the solution. But how do they construct these massive structures? One of the first steps is to prepare the foundations. Here they're using reinforced concrete. This is the steel framework that the concrete will be poured into. The concrete can bear the weight of the tower on its own, but it has to be reinforced because, like any tall structure, it's going to face some stiff winds. Without the steel reinforcement, the concrete would deteriorate and eventually give way. The steel frame gives the concrete enough flexibility to take the battering. The foundation also has 40-meter stakes driven through it, fixing it to the ground. When the 1,200 cubic meters of concrete is added, the base weighs over a thousand tons. All of the sections for the tower are produced by a specialist factory in Denmark. This is the bottom section. At a massive six meters in diameter, it's wide enough to bear the weight of the rest of the structure. The crane driver can't drop such an enormous section on a sixpence. It has to be dragged into place with ropes and brute force. Three more sections are fitted over the next three days. The fifth and final section is a real challenge. It's being fitted onto a tower that is already 120 meters tall. The nacelle is a powerhouse that sits on top of the tower, and this is where the wind energy will be converted into electricity. To attach it, the workers have to climb up by ladder. It's a 40-minute vertical trek, so it's definitely not a job for anyone that's out of shape or scared of heights. Now that the workers are at the top, the nacelle can be lifted up to them. This is the very heart of the wind turbine. The blades turn a rotor which is connected to a generator. This turns the kinetic energy into electrical energy which can then be stored. It passes through a transformer which bumps it up from 1000 to 20,000 volts. Then it can be diverted out to a local substation and onto the main grid. The rotor blades will be attached here. They're made in this factory. Every year they make about 1,800. But these will be the biggest ones the world has ever seen. Each an incredible 61 and a half meters long. The blades are made in halves that will be joined together later on. A plastic is reinforced with layers of fiberglass and these are sewn together by hand. It's a painstaking process, but using these lightweight materials makes the blades very efficient. To finish each half of the blade, they cover the mold with a plastic shell and suck out the air to make a vacuum. Then they pump liquid resin in. Because of the vacuum, the resin spreads quickly and evenly. Over the next few days, the resin merges with the fiberglass and dries to make a very solid structure. Workers then join the halves together to make a single hollow blade. To simulate the effects of strong winds over a 20-year period, they load a test blade with a weight of over 50 tons. Then they shunt it from side to side an incredible five million times. It passes the test, and now three identical blades can be taken to the site. To move a 61 and a half meter blade, you need a very, very long vehicle. 
Imagine trying to do a three-point turn in this truck. When the three blades are put together, you can really see the awesome scale of this project. They work around the clock to lift the blades into place. These men inside the tower are there to guide the rotor into place. It's a scary job. They're working with enormous objects at great heights in the middle of the night. As it's slotted onto the guide bolts, the hard work is over. Finally, the wind turbine is ready to start producing electricity. This single structure will provide enough to supply 5,000 homes.